All right, welcome everybody to the April 7th Harper Ledger Technical Steering Committee call. Uh, as you are probably all aware, we have two things that you must abide by on this call. The first is the antitrust policy notice that is currently displayed on the screen. And the second is our code of conduct, which is linked in the agenda. So uh, with that, let's go ahead and get started with the agenda. All right, so uh, as far as our announcements go, we have uh, the Hyperledger Dev Weekly Developer Newsletter that goes out each Friday to um, hundreds of Hyperledger developers. If you have something that you would like to have included in that newsletter, please leave a comment at the wiki page that is linked in the agenda. And um, the second announcement that we have is the Hyperledger Global Forum uh, is currently got the CFPs open until April 29th. Uh, so you have a couple more weeks to, to get your uh, CFPs in. Uh, as Hart had mentioned last week, there's a call for program committee volunteers that is currently open. And I will let Hart um, maybe talk about that because he's got his hand, hand raised. Thanks a lot, Tracy. Uh, for most of you on this call, if you're interested in being on the program committee for the Global Forum, uh, please reach out. We are looking for strong uh, volunteers and you know the TSC fits that bill. Uh, so we'd love to hear from you. Uh, I will be reaching out to uh, many of you that I think might be interested uh, individually, but if you're interested, please please feel free to go ahead and reach out and thank you for your time. All right, thanks Hart. And then the last announcement that I put on here is just a reminder to review the uh, poll request that is out there on adding a page on the TSC responsibilities uh, that Arno has so graciously written for us. Um, so please take, take an opportunity to do that. Uh, Bobby. Yes, hi everybody. Um, I just wanted to um, put this out there. The Learning Materials Working Group is formed a task force to do the uh, best practices and standard documentation um, information. So if anybody has any articles or information that you think would be of interest during our fact finding two weeks, which starts started on Monday, um, please post it in our uh, Discord page. Thank you. All right, thanks Bobby. Arno? Yes, thank you. Hi, everyone. Uh, I just wanted to say one more piece on the, the, the PR uh, on TSC responsibilities. I mean, we there are some, I mean, I think there are parts that are not controversial, but there are other ideas of addition. And uh, I mean, of course, you know, I expect this to be formally voted on by the TSC as a whole eventually before this gets merged. But it would be best if people, you know, had a peek at it and, you know, see if there's anything that you think is missing or more importantly that you disagree with. Because, I mean, technically, this is kind of what we're supposed to live by once. And so it better represent what you think is reasonable for you as a TSC member, you know, to, to, to be signed on. Or so I would, I, you know, as I said, I mean, Eventually, you, I suppose you will have a say when you get to vote, but you know, earlier input would be better. So I encourage people to come and have a look. Yeah, definitely. Thanks, Arno. All right, uh, any other comments uh, as far as announcements that people would like to make? Okay, uh, no additional announcements. So for quarterly reports, uh, we still have the Hyperledger Explorer quarterly report that we're uh, waiting on. I know there are discussions going on about the project offline um, to uh, determine how best to, to move forward. And so, um, you know, hopefully once we get some answers there, we'll, we'll actually hear back from the Explorer team uh, with what they're, what they're planning. And then as far as upcoming reports, we have the cactus and the fabric reports that are due next week. 
And so just the FYI that those are coming up. As far as discussion items, I do not, I'm not aware of any discussion items for today's uh, TSC business. Please let me know if that is not correct. Uh, if anybody has anything uh, TSC business that we should discuss before we get to the task force discussion, let's bring that up now. I just have a quick question. Who is the Indian Blockchain Institute? We're trying to take, uh, thank you. Uh, Rai, uh, Indian Blockchain Institute? Yeah, is this, is this Kamlesh or? Yeah, yeah. so uh, th actually this this is a Snapper Future Tech brand. Uh, oh, okay. This, okay, we were just trying to take a uh, role. Thank you. So any issue? Uh, sorry, I'm not aware. No, there's no issue. We were just trying to uh, to do the roll call for the TSC, and we weren't we weren't sure who that was, whether or not you were representing a TSC member. That's all. Okay. 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 Yeah. Yeah, you're okay. you're more than welcome to stay for the meeting. Okay. You just rename yourself, Kamlesh. Yeah, exactly. I was going to say maybe it doesn't sound. Oh, like he's sorry, aware. sorry. Actually, I logged in with that, uh, <laughs> that <laughs> ID. Oh. Yeah. Sorry, I just had some client meeting with that ID, so didn't update it. No problem. <laughs> All right. So any other uh, TC business that we should discuss? Just a quick one for me. I will have to leave at the half time. Apologies about that. All right. Thanks, Peter. All right, if there's nothing else, then Dano, I guess I'm handing it off to you to uh, walk through the, the task force discussion. Cool. Um, and I can share the screen or wait. Let me tap the screen. Here we go. Um, which browser do I have? Cool. So um, today we're starting the Projects Gaps Task Force. Um, this is a task force when we thought of the four main task force we're gonna be rotating through. This is one idea that um, I think it's time for uh, Hyperledger to, to, to consider. And apparently other TSC members did when this came up as one of the ideas to be listed for task force. And that is to figure out, you know, what projects are we missing in Hyperledger? Um, so let's, uh, the, uh, the, the pro forma parts, you know, Make this official task force or task to be complete, completed in a list of deliverables. Um, so the three things to complete are to figure out first, identify project areas the Hyperledger would want to act projects in um, that we don't already have. And the next uh, two tasks I think are related to that and, and basically fall off of that decision once we figure out the scope we want for that. One of them is to identify which labs projects could fill in those leads, those needs and uh, figure out which ones we might need to give more support to as TSC members and to encourage other people to join. And the second one is possibly to identify other sources where projects may be solicited from. Maybe we need to say, hey, we need a project in this area that doesn't have existing code and encourage people to start up a new project in labs. Or maybe there's a project outside of Hyperledger that isn't attached to another group that might be willing to come in. Um, I know that's specifically how Hyperledger Basu came in. It was a project at Consensus and uh, Brian came to us and asked us to come join a board. So that has been a path that's been, been worked before. So the deliverables to affect these, these three tasks, um, I think the first thing we need to do is we need to have a discussion about the overarching philosophy for the kinds of projects Hyperledger Foundation wants to host. Um, this, uh, cause there's been discussion like, you know, how, to what extent do we do, do we write, you know, there's been, Statements by the TSC in the past, we don't want specific applications. We don't want to host like a commercial websites project that happens to be blockchain as an open source thing. That's still out of bounds. But there's other things which have grown in bounds, um, such as uh, the identity libraries that have come in that were not necessarily part of the initial hyperledger scope. So we should probably, before we you know get too entrenched in saying, you know, I want this project to come on board, figure out what the, the boundaries are for the projects that we think are good fits. And also that might help us identify areas that are, we think might be kind of full already. Um, the, the notion of, of level one DLTs, we got already six of them, you know, five of them now in Hyperledger, four of them are active projects. We don't necessarily need more, but we might need uh, projects that support interop team, which I think is a hot area to grow in. So from that, uh, we get a list of specific project themes or areas from that philosophy. 
And we would also, in that list, I think we'd want to include which current projects we have that fit into those themes um, to show what we have. And that would better identify what the gaps are to show what we have and what we don't have so we can fill in and fill in the gaps as, as the name, the project gap force. And then a list of labs projects that might be good fits to fill in these, uh, these gaps and a list of unaffiliate of unfilled needs that we would need to solicit projects for and whatever it means. Um, I'm thinking of putting a time box on this of, of three months. So this would be three uh, meetings in the, uh, in the TSC and probably two or three off, off Thursday meetings. Um, so to that end, the first thing I would propose is we would need to discuss when we want to meet on our off non-TSC meeting, because I don't think we can get all this work done just on three calls during the TSC. Uh, my initial proposal would be two weeks from now on a Tuesday at the same time of this call. Um, are there any other proposals of anybody would think a better time uh, might exist? Going once. Does this conflict with anyone's project calls? I guess is a is a good question. Is this time? Nope. Works for me. So I don't when you share screen, you can't see everyone's emojis that well. That is one complaint about this. Try to make this as big as possible. Cool. So the next, um, and I'll set up a Zoom meeting and put this on the call. Uh, you know, just in case you can't see, Bobby, you had your hand up. Did you have something? No, I just wanted to say that time works for, doesn't conflict. Okay. I thought, I thought that was a thumb, not a hand. I think there was a thumb and then there was yeah. a hand, but that's it okay. It started with <laughs> a thumb. Okay. Um, So the next part we're going in this task where I think we get to more of the open discussion and uh, just, I don't, I can't drive the whole meeting. I'm going to need a lot of help in this one, but people brainstorming ideas for what the hyperledger project philosophy we might want to express with this and try and fill. And then after that project areas, these kind of interoperate and overlap, but I, I'd like to start initially with, with philosophy ideas and then move the areas we can move back and forth if we need to, as we get some of those ideas. So um, calling for people on the floor. What are some good project philosophy area? You know, what, what are some bullet points as to what the hyperledger project should fill? Not everyone at once. Or maybe what it shouldn't fill. What shouldn't we do? Jim. Yeah, I feel like uh, integration with public teams uh, should be a major uh, philosophy. I don't know that if that fits under this category uh, of philosophies. Um, it's either running, because at least with our customers, we see a lot of repeating patterns of using permission chains as side chains, but integrate with public chains to inject value back and forth. Um, it's got to be a um, pretty um, popular. Um, pattern, um, happy to hear um, thoughts from other other people. Okay. Um, Peter. I would say that we could add the idea in there that if a project wants to come in, but they're not necessarily a perfect match for our, what kind of projects we want uh, rule, but the project already has a substantial and big, relatively big community around it, and also maintainers and also contributors, then we should reconsider it, even if it's not exactly a match, because at the end of the day, for that project, based on the community and the number of contributors and maintainers, we could say that the people have voted that this is something that should be worked on. And so in those cases, I think we could relax uh, project, uh, project uh, acceptance criteria in terms of the relevance of it. Okay. 
And so is this a good uh, statement of that? Large projects looking to join each other that are not a perfect match should quote unquote grow the philosophy. Yeah, yeah, in short. Okay. How about the kinds of projects? Um, what um, what is Hyperledger's forward-looking goal? Or no? Uh, I'm sorry, I'm not answering your question. I, I would. Oh, I that's fine. To, I, I wanted to suggest that we may also want to set some limits. And you know, I, I'll historically, for instance, we decided to stay away from all the cryptocurrency stuff. Is that something we still want to enforce or not? And you know, I raise it as a question. I think it's important to basically set limits if we have some, you know, explicitly state what we wouldn't want to do as well as what we are interested in doing. I mean, there's right. plenty of stuff on the web three, for instance. Is that something we want to get in? Or is that something we feel like, no, we're not part of this? Okay, so I wasn't very active the first few years of, of Hyperledger. Um, I did the first few meetings and then took some years off. But when you say that Hyperledger initially stayed from cryptocurrency, what did that feel like? What was the direction of that? Um, Maybe Hart can fill that in or, or no? Well, I'm happy to let Hart to speak. I mean, but, you know, from my perspective, it was at the time, especially it was felt like, okay, there is all this stuff about cryptocurrency happening already. And what we're interested in is really the, the blockchain for the enterprise use case, which was not so much cryptocurrency oriented. And so, there was a clear intent not to focus on cryptocurrency and we didn't want to be overwhelmed by everything that was already happening in the cryptocurrency space. So it was a, there was, I think, an intent to kind of differentiate ourselves from all the crypto stuff. Uh, Hart, you had your hand up? Yeah, I guess this is a pretty fine line though. Um, you know, what, uh, you know, I, I don't think th there's uh, there's a, a strong line between running something and hosting software, but you know, there's a fine line between you know what is a cryptocurrency and what can be used for a cryptocurrency and, and all of these things. Um, so you know, like is a central bank digital currency a, a cryptocurrency right because we have a lot of we have a lot of people building on our platforms for those you know so uh i i think um there's there's a fine line here okay so do we distinguish between the software used to run the live network and the live network itself would be a... Yeah, I, I think we always have there. Dano, sorry to, to jump back in. And like, if we want to actually, this is not just a hyperledger thing. This is even like a Linux foundation wide thing. If we yeah. wanted to actually run software, we would probably have to get like everybody at the top of the LF to approve us. Right. Tracy's had her hand up for a bit. Yeah. Hey, no problem. Uh, so yeah, I, I'm curious as to whether or not our tagline is still blockchain for business. Um, and if it is, then I think that's a uh, place that we really need to say that uh, the focus that we have is enterprise. Um, you know, I, I think that it's very possible that if you take us away from kind of the, the roots or the foundations of that blockchain for business tagline uh, that you end up with a situation where Hyperledger becomes a completely different organization than it is today. And uh, I'm not sure if that's what's 
Hyperledger Foundation actually wants and the governing board wants um, per se, right? Like I think those are important discussions and maybe discussions that and really do need to ha be had at the governing board if we're, you're changing the mission or the vision of Hyperledger Foundation. And my point in this wasn't to try and challenge that line, but to try and figure out how the philosophy works within the current charter vision. Um, the blockchain for business, the tagline, what that what that means and, and that. Because I think if we're going to change the, you're, I agree with you, if we're going to change the whole basis of Hyperledger, that is a higher level issue and more of an existential question. So yeah, I, I, to put some limits on this, I don't think we should discuss the existential, but how the current philosophy of blockchain for business, where we should go into that and what projects we should look for. Um, I think our no had his hand next, or did you have any more, Tracy? Uh, no, I, I think that uh, when we get to project areas, I think maybe that'll clarify some of this as well. Okay, Arno, I think you were next. Uh, yeah, I wanted to follow up on, on uh, what Hart said. I, I totally agree with him. This is obviously we never prevented, you know, uh, anybody from building cryptocurrency system on top of the software that we are building. And indeed, uh, there's a lot of project now in the space of CBDC and, uh, and that's totally fine. I think indeed the distinction was really the difference between building software. I'm sorry, you just faded out, or was that my end? I lost him as well. Yeah, sorry, Arno, we lost you there. Uh, I think you're saying the difference is between building software and building a network, which I think is an important one. Did we completely lose him? We completely lost him. No, we didn't. Anyway. But I think his point was made. Um, Jim. Yeah, honestly, I, I, I don't think we have a real worry of uh, being mixed up with cryptocurrency communities because uh, um, those communities would not trust a business oriented foundation like Hyperledger for their technology. Um, we've seen Hedera, for example, trying to do this, right? And I think their success is debatable. Um, so I, I, I think our angle, and to me, it's always clear that uh, we are interested in uh, permissioned networks, but I think it's a unstoppable trend that permissioned networks uh, cannot continue to run uh, um, as silos. They are going to uh, integrate with public networks where the, uh, the value right? Um, the trillions of dollars of value exist because that's how you engage um, with the general public uh, for, for value to flow in, into and out of your uh, side chains. So I, I think, um, at least for me, it, it's, it's us embracing um, technology advan advancement in the public side. Uh, and help our customers to, to utilize them rather than the, the other way around that we will build stuff for the, for the public side. I, I think we would not be successful as a corporate uh, uh, endorsed entity to do that kind of thing. Okay. So I've heard a lot of discussion about cryptocurrencies and value networks and public networks. Um, are financial use cases the only use cases for this? Um, I guess Nathan's probably jumping in to answer my question, or do you have a different answer? Oh, I had a different comment, but I also think that that's a really interesting question because part of what I what got me to get into Hyperledger and was got me excited about it is the availability of experts who knew things I didn't know or who had insights into other parts of the ecosystem that I wouldn't have thought of or wouldn't have seen. So one of the questions I have is we start thinking about, you know, what pieces might be missing are where are there areas of expertise that we want to invite in or how can we get participation from um, more viewpoints that help us, you know, advance the platforms that are already here. Um, and, you, you know, in particular, we've recruited pretty hard from folks who were working on secure execution environments, who are working on different areas of hardware based cryptography. We've recruited um, pretty hard for folks who would participate in various um, special interest groups that were use case specific 
Um, though those haven't always translated into features for the core platforms that, that people have been building. I think those sorts of participants help make the project overall stronger. So I don't know how we go about maybe brainstorming different facets of what, what we're looking for. Okay. Grace. Yeah, I uh, just wanted to chime in. Obviously, no one would be surprised when I say I agree with uh, what Jim was saying about integration with public chains being a priority. I think we should be really specific, though, about whose needs we're trying to meet here. I think, you know, Tracy raised a good point that, you know, our tagline has been blockchain for business kind of for a while, but what, what does business mean? What, what, what is an enterprise? Who are our targeted users? Because I feel like, you know, that, you know, one type of enterprise will have very different needs than another type of enterprise. So, you know, just a philosophical question and I don't have a good answer at this point, but just wanna make sure when we're, we're thinking about what we are trying to attract or what what is our, you know, gap analysis, you know, let's be sure we know it's meeting, you know, the audience or the user that we want. Okay. Um, awesome, yeah. So. Thank you to Jim and Grace for the, the comments. Um, and I just wanted to hear what you all thought exactly was meant by integration with the public chain. You know, integration is one of those things like Web3 that, you know, means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. Um, so I'd just be curious if you, if you, if both uh, Jim and Grace could elaborate a little bit more on what they meant by that. Yeah, sure. Um, I, I can uh, give some of my um, uh, opinions. So to me, uh, when a uh, we have a lot of customers that are building um, sort of permission chain based DeFi scenarios, you know, uh, it can be um, um, writing smart contracts for a, a financial instrument, right? Uh, using or using um, fractioned, um, fractionalized ownership to represent some real estate, for example. That's all done in the side chain. Once that's become uh, successful, they want to engage the general public to open this up to more, to a much wider audience. And the best way to do that is um, allowing people to deposit their uh, public tokens, you know, Ethereum's or you know any of the tokens uh, that runs on Ethereum, as an example, Solana or other sidechain, uh, other layer one public chains, and then exchange for the tokens inside the, their permission sidechain, and they can so they can participate in the invest, investment opportunities they built in the side chain. And then once they've gotten some proceeds, you know, they want to, to withdraw so they can, you know, uh, realize their, their gains, uh, they will withdraw and then they exchange back to um, the cryptocurrency. And now they, they, they have more money going out uh, than uh, coming in. So that's, that's a um, pretty, uh, popular pattern we have been seeing uh, with enterprise customers sort of growing up and then realizing um, they, 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 they have this great technique uh, or architecture uh, to use so they can engage a, a huge amount of um, public that holds cryptocurrency. So that's kind of the main pattern that I, ha I had in my mind. Hope that helps, Hart. It does. Thanks for the good explanation. Just to jump in, I just wanted to echo. Um, sorry. <laughs> no, just wanted to echo. Jim described well exactly what I was thinking. I think the bridging technology and, and side chains is um, a major piece of it. Okay. Um, Artem. 
Yeah, so I, I just wanted to raise another point. So whenever you would like to, to, to think and work through the road standardizing the the you know the protocols, the, the structure and the, the things that we are doing, you know, with respect we're doing a lot of with respect to crypto. I mean the, the cryptography pro protocol, uh, for example, Hyperledger Ursa. There are a diversity in, in blockchain projects like you know Fabric, South Tooth, Aeropa, and etc. And it seems like you know we have a pretty strong uh, background and pretty strong community. And so I, I'm just wondering why. He, well, I'm not not wondering. I'm just you know trying to, to propose uh, whenever we would like to consider thinking towards to starting to standardize part of the protocols that we are developing. So you know whenever it makes sense to do anything with this. Um, so back to the question I proposed before uh, uh, we went down the uh, loss of experts in the diverse parts of the ecosystem. One question um, before we move on to areas that I don't think I got a good answer for um, is finance the only use case? Because that's I know there's been work on, on fabric for supply chain stuff. Um, and there's like some NFT projects that we have in labs. Um, I wanted to know what people's thoughts were is, is finance the only use case that blockchain for business should be addressing? Are there any other use cases that might be you know, useful? Maybe that's a nice bridge into the uh, project areas. Uh, Karen? Oh, Karen's hand went down. Uh, Nathan? Well, I, I have to say that um, the digital identity folks do a lot more things than just FinTech. Um, so certainly there's, um, a lot of different areas of interest there. Uh, we could probably just make a list of the SIGs that are active and have a fairly good um, uh, set of participants outside of just FinTech. Dave? I was gonna second your comment about supply chain. I think that is a first class use case. Okay. okay. And where's the list of things hide? And it's not very. Uh, if you guys the real questions, what are the active SIGs? Um, are the nine listed on the Hyperledger website uh, representative? Yeah, they're on the front of the wiki page. Anything that's in okay. I guess there have been mergers to some of those six, right? Recent times. There's eight now because uh, supply chain and trade finance got merged. Okay. Climate market, cap, uh, climate action, capital market, governance, risk and compliance, healthcare, media and entertainment, public sector, supply chain, telecom. Okay. The six I think is, is the, probably one of the things we should focus on and making sure that we have projects that might interest them. So maybe we should add that to um, solicit the six as well. Um, any closing remarks on the philosophy before we pivot over to project areas? I think another basic one is uh, focus on frameworks rather than applications. Excellent. Excellent. That's Thank a very good one, I think, honest. Go ahead. Question or probably a comment, right? So last year we worked on rewriting the charter for Hyperledger and we introduced the term called multi-party systems. And should we, and I, I don't think so, we have been very actively seeking for projects in these areas. And we probably need to look for what this means. And so to me, uh, I don't know, when I think of multi-party systems, it comes as what would enable for somebody to build a system that would allow them to interact with their partners or their business partners, right? It could go into the um, way of like implementing some data standards or having specific solving, I mean, having built a, a, prob a framework which would solve a specific scenario or 
with specific which could solve a specific domain area of pro problem statement. Okay. Lots of good stuff to synthesize uh, for our meeting on the 19th. Uh, great. So let's, uh, with what we've brainstormed so far with the philosophy without formalizing and synthesizing it, um, maybe we can start just listing off project areas that we might want. Um, doesn't have to be within the philosophy or it could be well within the philosophy, but let's just start listing them and see, see what the direction gets from that. Not all at once. There is one project at Hyperledger, what would you want it to be that we're not, we don't have right now? Everyone's gotta have that idea in their head, what would it be? Arun? I was just randomly thinking. So at least one of the problem that we end up building in most of our solutions is a way to trace what's happening on a blockchain network across um, the entire network. What are some of the things you need to trace? It's subjective and um, how we define the trace is pretty much subjective. Let me see if I can define it generically. Don't define it, just list characteristics of what you had to build in the trace. We can define it later. I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll take some time to think through it. Okay. Tracy. I think the tooling around our different sorts of layer one or L1 DLTs, right? Um, I, I think, you know, it, talking through tracing, uh, to me, what that brings up is, you know, expanding the ability to monitor and, um, you, you know, we're, we're already doing some automation with, with Bevel, but just continuing to build that out for all of our projects, not just for a single one, right? So having those kind of cross project um, tools for, for monitoring, I guess, is where I'm at. Okay. Monitoring, automation. Uh, deployment, I know Bevel does that. But we can list what we're currently covering too to try and get a feel for what what our plate should look like. You know, what are the, what are the what's the food pyramid for blockchain? Sure. Jim. I think we can really do with a uh, standard collection of uh, token implementations. It's such a useful construct, both fungible and non-fungible. Uh, I know the Fabric team uh, have, um, I think at least one, uh, maybe more uh, labs, um, but just feel like we can we can have more prominent implementations like in the Ethereum world, Open Zeppelin is an, no brainer to go to for high quality implementation for these things. Something like this would really help many customers who end up writing uh, something themselves if it's uh, it's a, if it's on fabric or one of the other DLTs that are not Ethereum based. Yeah, and the thing about Ethereum is you only really got well. I guess you could have some of the other aspects of it. But you only got the best for fungible and non-fungible. Any of the other um, interesting token ta taxonomy bits. Um, oh, Zeppelin does have some, but not all. Yep. Cool. Uh, Hart. I'm going to dream really big here. I would love to see cool. a, a common consensus interface uh, and you know implementation of modular consensus algorithms. Big idea, swing for the fences, I like it. Uh, Jim, did you still have your hand up? Okay, Nathan. Um, in the digital identity side, we've always thought about self-organizing namespaces. Um, and can we make it so that 
possessing some verifiable information qualifies you to share state or process state in a, in a shared namespace. So instead of thinking about the system as side chains, think, it, think about it more as uh, more, more like global storage. So there's some interesting ideas to explore there, I think. Any other big audacious goals? These don't have to be accomplished in three months. These could be like four year projects we could start. A project that we talked about kind of in is can we use blockchain to make decentralized development, more self-organizing. Okay. Art. Nathan, is this the reinvent GitHub as blockchain item? Yeah, in a different packaging, yeah, because I, I think it, it's taken a couple of tracks that didn't lead very, very to, to much, but there's a bunch of paths that, you know, were discussed on the uh, after hours conference track, so to speak, that, that we haven't tried yet. Gotcha. Right. Thanks. And I think I, I haven't been on those after hours conference tracks, but it makes me wonder if things like data availability are like some of the big issues that would be presented there, because you got more than terabytes of data. You've got, you know, approaching an exabyte of data on some of that. How would we share that? Artsum. Artem, still muted. Yeah, I think I think that we missed missing uh, one potential use case from the list, which uh, is uh, decentralized digital identity. <laughs> Yeah, the, the, the list that you, you have here, yeah. Ah, sorry, I missed it. Okay. What projects might help in decentralized digital identity that aren't, well, even if they are here, what, what's the scope? What's the, what's the food pyramid look like for a decentralized digital identity? <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> there's a lot of pieces of what trust over IP is defined as the decentralized digital identity stack that are already here. Um, we don't do as much on the um, edge agent or the um, what we would call the individual's identity wallet um, at Hyperledger as we might want. Uh, we also don't do as much uh, work on um, the peer-to-peer -peer crypto cryptography-based APIs. Um, the, the ARIES protocol um, work kind of has pushed a lot of interesting constructs around how you can do, you know, peer-to-peer -peer digital information sharing and how you can do dynamically composable APIs um, through that sort of infrastructure. And there's probably more we could both investigate and share about what's been going on in that area. Okay, Tracy. Enterprise wallets for both, um, for any type of asset, be them verifiable credentials or um, tokens. Yeah, I guess just, can I go? Yeah, thanks. Um, yeah, just add to that, uh, the idea of enterprise wallets, uh, MPC-based uh, wallet that I think it's kind of uh, these days is a must for uh, custody type of scenarios. MPC? Yeah, uh, multi-party compute. Okay, that sounds a little weird on my headphones, it's like non-clear characters. No, multi-party compute. Yep. Nathan. 
there's probably a whole class of enterprise tools integration issues that we should have on our docket for projects where whether it's integrating into conventional authentication systems integrating into you know business object systems or you know all those sorts of things that we could probably make a, a, a big list of from everyone's internal architectural roadmap debates yeah um what, what's the uh extract load transform CTL. ELT and ETL, there's there's both approaches to it. Extreme, whether you do the transform before or after, some people get excited about doing it before or some after. Okay, so um, looks like we've got a good list here. So I think that the next step for this, this task force, um, we could go on for 12 more minutes brainstorming, but I think we've reached a critical mass of some of these ideas. Um, so on the, on the, on the, on the uh, 19th, I think we need to um, try and synthesize some of the themes out of this. And Magic key combination. Yeah, there is none. Um, I guess you can add one more point to enterprise tools integration. Most of the times it may so happen that so when, when we talk about authentication, we eventually need to deal with the blockchain app, blockchain layer itself, right? And let's say if somebody is working on multiple protocols, they may need to deal with different types of key management that each blockchain has to go through. And since Hyperledger, um, most of the frameworks built does provide a permissioning feature. And if it would be nice to have a common, common integration point for that as well. Um, cool. Okay. Any other uh, last minute ads? You know, just a question. When you say active projects below, do you mean graduated projects? You're right. Or do you, okay. I just, you used the word active earlier and the way it, the way you said it, I wasn't quite sure whether you meant, you know, can people were contributing to it actively or if you meant graduated. So just, just wanted to verify. So, um, I mean, all of them actually, because <laughs> the activity of a project might give insight as to um, maybe they're close, but just a little bit off. So maybe we need to restart that project or we need to restart with a slightly different charter. So that might be worth looking into. I think there's also cases where some of these items probably are covered by the project, but we haven't publicized what's going on there very well. Yeah, because that I think that's that's very insightful because it might not be that we don't have a gap, it's that we don't know that we have something to fill that gap. Cool. 
So I'd encourage everyone to read over this, um, those who want to participate in formulating the philosophy and the areas and help identify the gaps. Um, feel free to contribute to this page, edit it, leave comments. Um, and from this, we'll, in, in two weeks time, we'll come back and we'll try and synthesize the themes. So when we come back against the TSC, we can discuss the themes, make sure it lines up and then start identifying um, where these projects line up and what the gaps really are and what we would want to fill those gaps, I think is where we want to come back in, in four weeks time and two weeks time after we synthesize that. Um, so I'd encourage everyone, I will send the, uh, when I get the invite out later today, I've got a, well, Thursday is my big meeting day. So it's going to be a while before I can set up the, uh, the invite to send it out. But when I send it out, you know, uh, please, please attend the meeting if you want to help uh, synthesize and, and categorize these, these brainstorming items. I guess that will be it for the day. Well, make good use of the extra time. Thanks for uh, keeping the agenda light. <laughs> Great. Thanks, guys. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Thanks everybody. Taylor. Thanks.